here's part one of our lesson on polynomials. A polynomial function in technical terms is a function of degree n, and it's of this form. Now this form looks a little weird, but it's where you have a coefficient and x to some exponent, and then you can have multiple terms. So it looks something like this, but the notation would just say you have a coefficient x to some power plus another coefficient x to some power and so on until we get to our constant term. And so this is going to be in descending order where you have your x and exponents all from the highest to the lowest down to our constant term. A polynomial is multiplied out like this um, in standard form. So if we have a polynomial, that first term, the one with the highest exponent, tells us a lot of information about the graph. And this is why we like it in standard form for this reason, because it will tell us what the end behavior is and what the degree of the function is. The leading term has the greatest influence on the end behavior of the function. And the degree of the polynomial will tell us the shape of the graph and how many x-intercepts it has. Now remember, another name for x-intercepts are zeros or roots. So the last term of the polynomial in standard form is the constant term. So it doesn't have an x with it. But what's nice about that constant term is that it will tell us our y-intercept. So in this case, it's 0, negative 6 as the y-intercept. A polynomial graph could look something like x squared. We've seen something like that before, so there's our quadratic graph. We could have a cubic function, y equals x cubed, but we could also just apply some other transformations and things with it. So we could have a cubic function, but it's got some other things going on, which makes some more wiggles. And we could have other types of graphs, but something that we'll notice that they are all kind of just a bunch of squiggles, but they're all continuous. There's no asymptote with it. There's no break in the graph. So it's all going to be a continuous curve that will may go up and down, but we can look at the end behavior of the function to tell what the degree is as well. So the degree of the polynomial and the leading coefficient tells us the shape of the graph or its end behavior. If it has an odd degree, something like y equals x cubed, or even y equals 2x to the fifth, y equals 4x to the seventh. So if it's an odd degree where the exponents, the highest exponent is odd, but a is greater than zero, that means that the leading coefficient is positive. Then we're going to have a graph that does something like this, where it's going down on the left and up on the right. So we call that down up behavior. And if you remember how we describe end behavior, we say as x goes to infinity, y goes to something. So now for this one, as x goes to the right, y is going up, so it goes to positive infinity. And as x goes to the left, negative infinity, the graph is going down, so y goes to negative infinity. If that leading coefficient was negative, so it's still going to be an odd degree, but let's say we have a negative in front. The exponent didn't change, but the coefficient did. It's now negative. What that has done is flipped our inequality 
sorry, our graph. And so it flipped it over the x-axis, which made this now an up, down in behavior. So I say as x goes to infinity, y is going to negative infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. The end behavior will only tell us what's going on at the ends. It doesn't really tell us what's going on in the middle. So if we had something like one of these examples, there are some things going on here where it may change directions, but the end behavior is what's telling us or what we're getting from that leading coefficient and the degrees of same situation here. Anytime it's an odd degree, you will have opposite end behavior. If it's an even degree, then we'll have the same end behavior. So let's go to C. We have an even degree like x squared, and A is greater than zero, so A is positive. So it might look something like y equals 3x to the fourth. It's still a positive A value, but the degree is even. We'd have y equals 2x to the sixth. All of those would have some type of end behavior where it's going up, up. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y still goes to infinity. They're both going up. It's an even degree where a is less than zero, so a is now negative. Something like negative x squared, we know that reflected. Negative 3x to the fourth, negative 2x to the sixth. And we should note that it doesn't have to be just one term. You could have negative 2x to the sixth plus 5x to the fifth, 7x squared minus 18 some long polynomial like this, but we're only concerned about that first term. So it has down, down in behavior. They're going in the same direction because it's an even degree, but it was reflected. So as x goes to infinity, y goes to negative infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to negative infinity. Now, a polynomial in factored form is actually more helpful. So it's very useful because we can easily find the zeros or the x-intercepts, same thing, of the function. So if it is in factored form, we won't automatically see what the y-intercept is like we had in standard form. And we would have to figure out what that leading coefficient is. But we will be able to automatically find the zeros. And we'll see how that's actually more beneficial somewhat. So if we're trying to find the zeros of a polynomial, we've done this with quadratics. We want to get it in factored form and then use the zero product property to set each factor equal to zero and solve. And then we can write out our zeros with any multiplicities. If I use the zero product property with this, I'm saying, when does the function equal zero? So I'm gonna set each factor equal to zero and say x minus three equals zero x plus 4 equals 0, and 2x minus 1 equals 0. And we just solve each one of those for x. So I'd add 3 to get 0 plus 3, which is just 3. Subtract 4, 0 minus 4 is negative 4. When I get to this one, I'm going to have to add 1 first to get 2x equals 1, and then divide to get 1 half. So we have three zeros, or x-intercepts. We say, if I put it in order from least to greatest, that would be 
negative 4, 0, 1 half, 0, and positive 3, 0. All of those have multiplicities of 1. In 2, we want to do the same thing. And what I'm going to just do for this example, at least, is show when we have something squared, what that just means is it's the same thing twice. Now, you don't have to write this out every single time, but we're going to do it for this one at least. Because something squared just is multiplied by itself. If I set each factor equal to 0, x plus 8 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, x minus 4 equals 0, and 5x minus 3 equals 0. What we'll see is when I get to that x minus 4, I'm going to get the same thing twice because it's the same factor. Now 5x equals 3, so x equals 3 fifths. So that 4 gave us a multiplicity. Multiplicity just means that it happens more than once. Notice I didn't do anything with the negative 3. That is because that leading um, factor doesn't have an x with it. It doesn't have a variable. So there's no way that negative 3 is going to make this equal to 0. It's just negative 3. If it had an x there, then that would be something I set equal to 0. So if we write out our x-intercepts, let's see, an order would be negative 8, 0, then 3 fifths, 0, and 4, 0. I'm not going to have to write it twice. I can just write multiplicity 2. And number three, again, same situation. And you can write out the x plus five three times if you want, but that exponent should automatically tell you there will be a multiplicity on that value. The same thing's actually happening here with the x squared. If I set this equal to zero, x squared equals zero, Go ahead and write each term or each factor. Okay, but when I solve this first one, I can square root both sides. And the square root of 0 is just 0. But that has a multiplicity of 2. It has a multiplicity of 2 because there were two of these x's. x squared means x times x. I can solve this one, 4x equals 1, so x equals 1 fourth. There is no exponent on that factor, therefore that's just a multiplicity of 1. Subtract 5. And I get x equals negative 5. But this has a multiplicity of 3, because there was the factor to the third power. So when I write this out, zeros. Let's see, I'm going to start with negative 5, 0, because that's the smallest one. It has a multiplicity of 3. And then 0, 0 has a multiplicity of 2. 1 fourth, 0 doesn't have a multiplicity, it's just multiplicity of 1. Usually we don't write out multiplicity of 1, but you can. And then let's do this very last one. 1 fifth x plus 2, x minus 2. If I solve this out, just like what we did with quadratics. x plus 2 equals 0, x minus 2 equals 0. So x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to positive 2. That 1 fifth will not set equal to 0 because it doesn't have an x with it. So these 
are just negative 2, 0 and positive 2, 0. In the next video, we'll look at what is the multiplicity due to our graphs.